Hi everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Best on your time zone. I hope you guys enjoyed the sessions from some interesting speakers and more to come as the agenda progress throughout the day. So uh, in this session, I will give you an overview of Omnichannel in Salesforce. So before we start with the topic, I would like to introduce myself first. So I am Ikra Ahmed, Salesforce Certified Architect. Right now I am working as a Salesforce Architect for a US-based company, Einstein LLC, and that is 100% remote job. I am also a top rated plus consultant on Upwork.com. I have eight certifications in Salesforce as well as Microsoft certifications in HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript. And also I form stack app consultant certification. So that was all about me. Now let's start with the topic. In this session, we will cover what is on the channel on what objects omnichannel is supported, how to set up omnichannel in few easy steps, types of routing, omnichannel supervisor for managers and admins. And then in the end of this session, we will also perform hands on activity in the developer world. So let's start with the what is omnichannel. So, as you know, with so many conversations across so many industries and organizations, uh, Omnichannel channel plays a vital role. We will show you how Omnichannel approach to customer service can make your customer more happier. So, Omnichannel is a tool that sits inside a sales and service console. For the guys who don't know about the console, so the console is the unified view that allows agent to work on multiple records in a split view at the same time. And it also allows uh, different kinds of shortcuts to, uh, for agents to work on uh, console. So once uh, Omnichannel is enabled and configured, so agents don't need to get a request or lead manually. So basically Omnichannel uh, pushes leads, cast, or any other object for which Omnichannel is configured uh, automatically to the agent. So because uh, with the Omnichannel, it is, is uh, easier for agents to work on their assignments fast. So it can also close the assignments quickly with increases productivity. So, okay, so without Omnichannel, agents may often rely on the list view. So for example, suppose we have hundreds of leads or cases coming into the system daily basis. So what agent will do, they will just go to a object list view and find the case, let's say, they will filter the list view that get all the cases which created today and still open. So that is with lengthy process and, and which, uh, which is not as uh, productive. So that's where Omnichannel comes. Omnichannel basically save lo lo lots of time for agents 
instead of uh, choosing uh, records and agents agents to more productive ones so for example if we have multiple agents so some agents may get uh, without omni channel some agents may get more complex cases always and while some always work on is easy cases so omni channel solve this problem also it always assign equally it, it basically it always distributes equally among the agents so let's see how it is important omni channel right now so according to the survey for 2018 by icmi omni channel ranked as the number one priority ahead of nine other categories so these are all tools which normal call center use these are the objects which omni channel supports so cache objects and chats contact requests or messaging orders social posts as well as video calls swim requests and custom objects which don't have any master object relation so basically uh, self force uses from work and work items to refer all the different types of self force objects uh for uh, we we can also have uh, basically when we configure the omni channel salesforce also create a, a generate object called work item and we can also create a process or a flow on the work item object to customize it to uh, make it work Uh, as per our needs, for example, let's say uh, we have a requirement that whenever any lead comes in and any user accepts that lead, means accept uh, work item for that lead, then convert the lead automatically. So what we will do is we will just create a process builder on the work item object. and will uh, set trigger on the accepted status and once accept accepted we will just convert run a uh, convert method to convert that lead so here are a few easy steps to enabling the omni channel so uh, basically we will cover uh, all these steps in our hands on activity this is just a small uh, let's see a small overview about these steps create service channel like i said before that it will just turn any self of object like cash or lead into work record then creating routing configurations and presets configurations uh, using this we can uh, uh, set the priority for an agent and also set the size of uh, any work item so there are uh, three types of routing queue based routing scale space routing and external routing uh, when we actually enable omni channel then queue based routing get enabled by default so we uh, don't need to any uh, perform any additional step to enable queue based routing then if we need to enable a skill based routing then there is also an 
uh, option to enable that. So basically, uh, different between these routing uh, model are routing models are uh, in the queue based routings. Uh, we 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 can have uh, multiple users in the queue, which represent a single skill in the, in the organization. For example, you can have a billing queue or a technical support queue. Uh, then we have skill-based routing in which uh, we have multiple agents uh, with different skills. For example, we have a customer having a case uh, which requires a, an agent speaks Spanish. So with skills-based routing, omnichannel can assign skills that you create such as Spanish as a required skills on the case. Then with the external routing, uh, we can create our own routing model in omnichannel. Again, we uh, we will just cover queue-based routing in our hands-on activity because skills-based routing and external routing involve some apex. Uh, so we can have separate sessions on these two. Okay, so Omni Salesforce provides. Uh, uh, great feature to uh, view all the activities by the agents uh, in the call center. So uh, admins or supervisor can see how, how their agents are performing. And uh, like uh, they can see information like what average times and average handle times, active handle times and more. So it, this uh, basically, this is a view using which admins can oversee all the activities uh, performed by their agents. It, it also provides some reports using which uh, admins uh, and managers can see how their agents are performing. So this is the complete picture of how Omnichannel works. It will give you a better sense. So in the first layer, we have communication channels like email, web to lead, email to cast, community, uh, social post, or chat, or SMS. So whenever any case or lead get generated from this channel, it goes to Salesforce and assign, get assigned to the queue. Then queue uh, with the queue connected to the uh, routing configuration, it checks if any, uh, any agent get available in the queue and as a capacity, then uh, that case will get go to that agent. If uh, there's also an option where agent can automatically automatically accept the request, we will co co cover that also in our hands on activity. So and then agents uh, agents can also reject the request. Once they will reject the request, the case or lead will go again to the queue and will show again to another agents, other agents. Help. Okay, now I think it's time to perform some hands on activity. We will log into the developer role now. Okay, so
we can enable the omni channel by going to setup omni channel setting enable okay so when we enable the omni channel some optional checkboxes appeared which says enable skillless routing so as i said earlier that we will not be using this in our session then enable status based capacity model uh, which allows the uh, agent to release the workload by changing the owner or the status so let's enable the omni channel so after enabling the next step would be configure service channel service channel basically converts the object into work item so we can see cast lead and order these objects uh, are showing right now we don't have any custom object otherwise uh, those objects would have uh, so we will guess is We can also uh, set a custom footer if, um, in the Omni for the uh, service console. I will show you right now how the standard footer looks like. So after creating the service channel, next step would be routing configurations. So the routing configuration is more about the uh, weight of the work item as our work item will be assigned to the agent. For example, we have two types of uh, model here and these are least active and most available. Of course, there is a, a third one also, which is external routing but uh, we mostly use least active and most available so uh, with most available uh, work item routes to the agent with the most open capacity uh, while for the least active ones uh, it routes uh, to agent with the fewer number of open, open work items so we will select most available here have priority case then we can also set a default user in case of any you know a limit may come so in case of any limits uh, this default user will get assigned to the work item automatically we can set priority here as we may have a multiple routing configuration And in the end, we have uh, capacity. So we can uh, either define a unit of capacity or the percentage. So this uh, capacity checks when any uh, work item get, uh, consumes from the agents. For example, if, uh, if we will set two year, then any agent will select the work item from this routing configuration uh, will lose his uh, two, two capacity. We will uh, set agent capacity in the presence configuration, which is coming next. So before that, we will create a queue 
which will be connected to the routing configuration we create. So let's say tier one. I priority cache. This was the queue uh, routing configuration we created earlier. Then we will select object. I will select my user uh, for the testing purpose. Okay. Now we have routing configuration, queues. So next would be uh, presence configuration. Presence configurations is more about the user's capacity and a user preference. So we have one already created, which comes by default. We can always create a new one. But for now, we will just use default one. So you can define here uh, how many capacity does the user have. Then uh, if, if we will create any custom configuration, then we can assign the users. But uh, as I said, this is the default one. So all the users will be assigned to this configuration by default. So all the users will have uh, four capacity. So uh, for example, in the uh, routing configuration, as we define two in the capacity for two, two for the case. So let's say uh, agent A accepted the case. So it will uh, take two uh, and agent A as total four, four capacity as we are defining here. So once agent A will accept any case, so, so it will on uh, there only two will be left. So you can uh, only uh, accept two cases. So next would be recent stretches. This is just a status agent can set on the omni-channel utility bar. We can set online status, market online, available call for cash objects. Then we can set another one which is offline and we will mark that as busy. In the busy status, uh, it will not accept any work item. Now, as we have set the present status, we will need to assign present status to the profile while using this status. So different profile may have different status based on business process. We will search present status here. The ones we created were online or on offline so
dan ah uh, one more thing another thing this is small thing but many user gets an issue that their omni channel is not working so the uh, most of the time the reason is that service cloud user is not selected on their user record so it will omni channel will only work if if this, this checkbox will be checked so it's already checked i will cancel it Now we will add a utility item in the console app. Remember we were talking about the console footer. So we are adding same footer in the console. That's where we can basically call it standard footer component. We can add it by going to app man app builder app manager sorry add and save it Okay, so now we have done all the configurations. So let's test it. We'll go to case object. Okay, see uh, this footer is coming now. We will mark the status online and we'll create a case. We can create with, with some basic information. So request uh, hasn't come yet because remember we connected the routing configuration with the queue tier one. So once we will assign the case to the tier one then request will come we will do it manually for now but uh, normally we uh, create process builder or the flow to assign queue assign the queues to the objects dynam dynamically so tier one I can accept it. Because uh, I set my user in the queue, so there was only one user in the queue, so it assigned my user. So now let's have a look at Omni supervisor. Yeah, so we can see all the information about the agent. Either the agent is online or offline. And okay. Uh, how much workload he has
we can also check history of the queues then assigned work so i think yeah i think uh, reporting part left so we can also create uh, reports basically uh, we will need to create a custom report tab because uh, report not already enabled for omni channel so we will need to create custom report We can select agent work in the primary object. We can select any for now deploy. So we can add many fields in the report around the agent, for example, the date on which agent accepted the work item and if uh, agent has canceled any work item, then cancel date, decline reason, handle time, yeah, so we can add all these fields and admins and supervisors can easily uh, judge what uh, how their agents are performing. So I think uh, that's all from my side. So if you have any questions, then you can send it to us. You can also connect me on LinkedIn. Okay, thanks a lot. Have a great day.